Hi readers! Today we are visiting something we have visited many times this year, but now we're doing it with fairy tales. You guys have been doing such an awesome job at working with your characters in your fairy tales, and we are ready to move on to some next level comprehension skills. One of the most important things for a reader to pay attention to is the lesson in the story. We want to know what is the author trying to teach us through the story? Or what is the character trying to teach us? What lesson has the character learned that we can use in our own life? So today's question is, what's the moral? What is the lesson learned? What is the theme of this story? So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at one of our fairy tales and we're going to see if we can find out what the lesson learned is. To help us with that, I'm going to show you a list of all different lessons or morals or themes that are most commonly seen in fairy tales. And with that list, hopefully it can help us with the book we're going to be reading together today and also in the books that you're going to be reading on your own. So let's take a look. So here is the most common lessons, themes, morals that we find in fairy tales. And as we read, these are the ones that we're going to see most often and these are the ones that we are going to look for as we read. Um, I'm sorry that it's kind of flashing in front of you. I'm videoing it off the computer. Uh, printer is not working, so this is the best we can do. Uh, but some of the ones you're going to see on here are hard work pays off, be a good friend and you'll have good friends, um, you want to, uh, honest is the best policy, deception and lying will catch up with you, breaking your promises or not following the rules can lead to problems, actions are more important than words, there are two sides to every story selfishness will bring you misery do the right thing even if it's hard to do don't under underestimate the ability of others mm -hmm. uh, you should forgive even though you may not forget good triumphs or beats evil so as we are reading we want to be on the lookout for these and I'm going to finish reading our story of Betsy Who Cried Wolf today. And we're going to talk about what lesson do we think or what moral or what theme. They're all the same word and they're all the same thing. Different words for the same thing. And we're going to see which one of these we can match to our story. And sometimes there's more than one. So when you're reading today and every day, I want for you to think about what lesson is being learned here or what lesson is being taught here. We've talked about lessons before. Now we're just relating them to our fairy tales. And this is a great list for us to keep coming back to because then we don't have to create it on our own. We have a place to look to and say, oh yeah, that's definitely the moral of this story or the lesson that's being taught or learned. So let's go ahead and read our book. So this is where we left off in our story, Betsy Who Cried Wolf. If you remember in this story, we have our main character, Betsy, who is a shepherdess and she went to school, she graduated, she's now in charge of this flock of sheep. And one of her main concerns is to make sure that there is not a wolf around. She's got to protect the sheep and she's now seen the wolf twice. And as she called for the other shepherds to come up, uh, the wolf disappeared. So they don't believe her. So that's where we are right now. The next morning, Farmer Woolsey let Betsy have the flock again, but he said it was her last chance. When she reached the pasture, she scanned right, no wolves. She scanned left, that wolf again. But this time he was bearing his fangs, galloping down the mountain towards the sheep. Snarl, growl, growl. Betsy blew her whistle. She cried, wolf, wolf, wolf. She turned to look down the slope. Nobody was coming. She had to stop the wolf herself. Betsy spun around to watch him. Her foot knocked into her lunch pail and her pie helpings tumbled out. Zimo stopped short and sniffed. Yum. The sheep just smell like wool, but those pies smell delicious. He took a step towards them. 
My, he was skinny, Betsy thought. Poor wolf, he was starving. Still, she had a job to do. She picked up her tin plate of shepherd's pie to hurl at him. Zimo sat on his haunches and howled. A tear trickled down his cheek. He has a lovely voice. Watch out, doggy. Food, food. Betsy lowered her arm. So far, he hadn't hurt the sheep. If he wanted her lunch, he could have it. She put the plate down and stepped back. Help yourself. Yum. Zimmo rushed at the two big helpings of pie. Betsy watched. For a second, she thought about petting him, but a shepherd couldn't pet a wolf. Zimmo woofed down Betsy's lunch and licked the plate clean. He felt much better now, so he wagged his tail and trotted away. Halfway up Rosenrise, Zimmo hid behind a tree and watched Betsy. A ewe had gotten stuck to a bramble bush, and she was pulling the brambles out one by one. What a fine shepherd she was. But, uh-oh, those lambs over there were too close to the cliff. Look, shepherd, look! But she was too busy. And the lambs... Ah! Zimmo had to save them. He bounded down the mountain, growling and snarling. Betsy whirled around, the wolf charging at the sheep, and she didn't have any more lunch to give him. She picked up a stone, but she didn't throw it because... He was chasing the lambs back to the flock. He was herding them. He was great at it too. Herding, not hurting. <laughs> For the rest of the day, Zimo helped Betsy with the herding. When the sheep didn't need them, Betsy petted Zimo and he taught her to howl. Then they sang together, trolley, trolley, ha, 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 loo. That night, Betsy took Zimo home to eat chicken pot pie and sleep in her room over her mom's bakery. In the morning, Farmer Woolsey and the other farmers apologized to Betsy. Next, Zimo howled the shepherd's oath. Keep sheep safe. From then on, Betsy and Zimo herded together and ate mom's pies together, the two shepherds of Bray. You know, there's a moral in this somewhere. Someone should write a book about these two. Hmm, so this is actually perfect. We are talking about what's the moral. Now that the story is over, what is the lesson in this story? And many times stories have more than one lesson, more than one moral. So this is what the sheep think. People who cry wolf may be deceived and not deceivers. Share your lunch and you'll probably have wool for a nice warm sweater. Wool on the sheep is worth more than wool on the wolf. Sometime a shepherd's best friend is a wolf. The pie is mightier than the fang. A story with too many morals is like a book that won't end. <laughs> so even though these are kind of silly, I believe that this one right here is definitely one of the morals. On our list that we looked at, it said um, about being kind to others and being friendly to others. And if you are a good friend to others, you will have good friends. And instead of Betsy being mean and nasty and not giving Zimo food, she was kind and she shared her food. And by doing that, she gained a friend and she realized that it wasn't actually the sheep he wanted. He was just hungry. Um, we also, another moral is about, you know, doing the right thing, doing something good for others, even if it's hard to do. It was hard for her to offer her food to him, knowing that he was a wolf and she's not supposed to be kind to wolves. They're seen as dangerous. So our characters often learn lessons, but we can also learn lessons from them as well. I hope you enjoyed this book. And as you are reading today and every day, I want for you to ask yourself this question while you're reading and when you're done reading. What's the moral? What is the lesson learned? And I've posted our little fairy tale moral sheet on our webpage so you can use that while you're reading. You can look at it and say, yeah, this is the one that goes along with my fairy tale. Happy reading.